people ask me, Harley, I want to get fucking fit. I want to get so fit that none of my mates can keep up. I want to, I want to be the fittest I can be without doing drugs. How the fuck do I do it? That's a question I get all the time. People go, oh, I was going to keep up my kids. I want to smash my mates in the weekend. I want to, you know, get my black belt or whatever. How do I do it? How do I get better? How do you get better? I'm going to tell you the three little secrets that have just revolutionized my whole life. Just totally revolutionized my whole life. First secret, you want to know what it is? Is hang out with people who can kick your ass. If you want to be better in Thai boxing, you've got to hang out with people who can kick your ass. If you want to be better in cycling, you've got to hang out with people who can drop you. If you want to be better at ballet dancing or anything, you've got to hang out with people that just shame you. That's how I got good at cycling. And now I can, just before I was out riding on my mountain bike in sneakers and flat pedals, in shorts and t-shirt with a eight kilo backpack and some 19 year old kids on roadies, Want to give old man Duran a bit of a race. And I fucking dropped him. <laughs> so it's so it's fun, you know, it's fun. I'm into being fit because it's fun and it feels good. And you get to talk a bit of shit and, you know, trash talk people and everyone gets fitter and better at the same time. That sounds pretty cool. So you gotta hang out with people who are way fitter than you. Way fitter than you. And how do you find these people? You you go you join up clubs, you go hang out where people train and you introduce yourself and you make friends with people. And you might get a lot of wankers go, fuck off, mate, whatever, fuck off. And that's cool. There's plenty of people out there who, who do want to share their experience. You don't want to hang out with wankers, man. People who don't say good day or they think they're too hot shit, fuck them. They're insecure. They're not got enough and much to ask to offer you anyway. Find people who are actually friendly and personable and they can kick your ass as well. And then, a few years later, when you're really fit, you can go back to those people who snobbed you off and kick their ass. So you found your people you're going to train with. That becomes your social group. When your fitness group becomes your social group, fuck, man. That is when the changes go crazy. My social group, you know what my social group is? It's nutrition and sport. That's my social group. I don't hang out with stoners anymore. Some, in fact, some of my stoner friends have come over into fitness and sport. And now we hang out. And it's cool. So I don't hang out with downers no more at all. And some of my sp sport crew, they go out and get pissed and shit. I don't hang out with them then. I hang out with them on the good times. The sport times, man. At 6 o'clock in the morning, smashing up the local hills or... 5 o'clock in the afternoon doing some kickboxing or, or whatever. Or just riding home from work and meeting new people. So when your social group becomes your fitness group, that, man, that is fucking key. You know what I mean? Because so many people go, oh, I don't have any friends. All my friends are fucking losers. Exactly. Fuck them off. Get rid of them. The best thing you can do for fucking losers is not to be a fucking loser. So hang out with people who have high standards, who have high expectations. Why? Because we raise ourselves the expectations of other people. That sounds interesting. We raise ourselves the expectations of other people. The expectations people have for us, we raise those. That's like in the Tour de France. People can't ride that fast when they're by themselves. They can't put out that wattage up when by themselves. Or in basketball, you can't perform that well when you're playing by yourself in the court. When you've got people like expecting you to perform, that's when you raise above. That's why if you want to set a personal best, you've got to have a crowd around you supporting you or trash talking you or whatever. You've got to have people pushing you, pushing you always. That's why when I do my intervals, I don't go out by myself. That's boring. That's exercise. I like to have fun when I train. I don't want to exercise. I want to have fun. I want to play. Anything but exercise. I'm too, I'm too busy to exercise. I want to play, man. When all your work is play, you'll never work another day. So how often do you train with this new group of friends? Train with them. Not every day, man, because if you've had a big break or you had a shake, you don't want to fry yourself. Start with once a fortnight, once a month, and build it up over time, and eventually a few times a week. Definitely. And you ask them, learn from them. And if they give you advice, which is normally going to be, hey, dude, just back off a bit, like you're training a bit too much, you're going a bit too crazy, listen to it. Listen to it. Because you don't want to overtrain yourself and burn yourself out and go, oh, I'm not cut out for this. I see that in cycling so often. I've been racing since 1997 in Adelaide, Australia, and I'm always back here every year. Always new faces. Like, I go to a race now, and I hardly recognize anybody. Out of, out of 200 riders, I recognize maybe 10 people. 10 people. Look at the percentages of that. That's crazy. So, you know, we've got like 5%, 95% dropout rate in cycling. It's, it's insane. You always want to train smarter versus train harder and make it part of your lifestyle and have realistic goals. So what's the second tip? So what's the second tip? The second tip is to wear shit out, man. Wear stuff out. What do I mean by that? I mean, this is what happens to my socks. you got a, you know, you got a sock puppet here. Wear stuff out, man. These are my cycling gloves. Wear shit out. You don't need to spend a lot of money, man. You just need to train consistently. That's what we're doing. These cycling gloves, man. 50,000 kilometers and still going. I've stitched them up even. Look at that. Can't even afford new cycling gloves. I'm so poor, I can't even pay attention. We're training consistently by wearing things out. So just, I wear out bike tires, I wear out shoes, just wear stuff out. 
not by training excessively, but by training consistently. It's gonna take you five to eight to 10 years to get on top of the game. I don't know anyone at pro level sport who hasn't been doing it for at least eight years. And people who maybe took them five years, they've had like a background in something else. Like maybe a cyclist can go from elite runner to professional cyclist in five years because they've got that running base. Or if someone's a, a wrestler or a sumo wrestler, they can become a bodybuilder because they've got that base. But no one's going from couch potato to elite level athlete with no, no background in like less than a year. That's just bullshit, those people are lies, it's a scam, it's a money fucking scam, whatever. Five to eight to 10 years. So if you wanna start getting out there today, you wanna to start doing that 30 minute walk today, you wanna to start doing that 30 second jog today because it's gonna take you five, eight, 10 years for you really to be smashing it. Just gonna be honest with you there. And anyone that says otherwise, they're just talking shit, man, because you look at Michael Phelps or Ian Thorpe or Lance Armstrong, so anyone that says it takes less than five, eight, 10 years is talking shit. Look at Lance Armstrong, how long did it take him to win his first Tour de France? 15, 16 years? Kiddo Evans? Took him like 21 years? So people just, they don't understand, man. It takes a long time. So start today, train consistently, set realistic goals. Third tip, last tip, is your diet, man. You gotta put enough fuel in the tank. High carb, low fat, vegan, heavy on the fruit, man. That's where it's at. Anyone that says, oh, you gotta do low carb diet and calorie restrict, and that's fucking bullshit. If you calorie restrict, if you carb restrict, and you're trying to get fit, you're gonna fucking burn out. You're gonna be running on caffeine, running on stimulants, binge eating, being a fucking nut job to be around, and your, your athletic goals are just gonna be out the door. You might be fit for a bit and then boom, you'll blow out and burn out and bubble out and bum out just because they starve themselves, man. Like a lot of newbies do just because they starve themselves. I see it all the time. People just starving, starving, starving. Even some pro athletes do it. They starve themselves, do like eating disorders, and then they just quit. They just lose their career, lose themselves, suicides, drug addiction, deaths, heart attacks, all this crazy shit, man, because people are calorie restricting, carb restricting. And man, I'm telling you what, if you want lifelong results, develop the lifestyle where it's easy to maintain a healthy lifestyle by healthy eating, easy to maintain your, your activities and your, your social life and your, your diet guidelines and things like that. Make it easy, man. Make it realistic. So many people are trying to have this uh, putarian mindset of like, well, if that's good, then I'm gonna go to the next level and that, and then they just blow up and go, oh, Charles really disciplined and dedicated. It's like discipline and dedication don't mean shit if you're heading the wrong direction. You can be going, I'm gonna go to fucking Brazil and you're heading to Antarctica and you're d dedicated and disciplined and your boat hits Antarctica and you're fucked. You gotta have dedication and discipline on the right tr on the right path. The classic saying is direction is more important than speed. Direction is more important than speed. So many people focus on the speed. I wanna get here, I wanna get there, I wanna do it now, 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 now. And they're going in the wrong direction. Boom, king hit, knocked out, TKO, down for the count. And they just hate it. And they say, oh, I'm not cut out for it. I'm not, you know, not, not dedicated enough. It's all about direction. It's all about hanging out with people who are just better than you. Just do it, man. Crush your fucking ego, get your ass kicked, get humiliated and laugh at it. Laugh at yourself getting your ass kicked. I've done that in cycling. I've got out with some guys, remember in uh, 1998, went out with some guys up this hill called Mount Lofty, and they just fucking owned me, man. It just <laughs> took off in the horizon. I used to think, I'm oh, pretty good, you know. I'll fucking go anywhere on the bike. I went out with these roadie guys, man. They just annihilated me. I was like, shit, <laughs> I'm pretty out of shape. But then, over the years, slowly got up there. Now, I'm the one who's annihilating people. So it takes time, it takes time. And I've seen people you know, racing in D grade and getting their ass kicked, getting dropped in D grade, and now they're professional cyclists. So persistence is key. And what have they done? They've trained with people better than them, they took the advice, they've been consistent, and they've been eating well. And getting to sleep, the early nights, high carb is where it's at. You ran out of carbs, you're gonna overtrain, you're gonna quit, you're gonna be fucking hating it, and you're gonna be some fragile, emotional wreck. Because those who eat the least carbs freak out the most. Remember that, those that eat the least carbs freak out the most. They have the more depression, they have the insomnia, they have the yo-yo mood swings and the training and just always on the edge of breakdown. I've been there myself, man, with the ignorance. So I can tell you from experience, man, high calorie, high carb, high fun, high octane lifestyle is the only way. Make it part of your lifestyle. Make it part of your identity. You are a fit person. You're getting fitter and healthier. And you're helping save the planet. Versus doing something where you get really good and doing something that's really dumb and just drops you off the deep end. What are we talking about? Like calorie restriction or low carb diets. People get really good at these things that are really dumb and they just get boom, dropped off the deep end. So be smart, train smarter versus training harder. Take advice and people getting results you desire. Train with better people. Be consistent, wear stuff out, 
three, high carb, high calorie, low fat, vegan, heavy on the fruit. That's where it's out. I'll see you next video. Don't just do it. Do it fucking better.